feel like I'm being probed. Hey everyone, I'm Daniel Miller, and this is Hot Science. And this is a habanero pepper. And this was a mistake. I'm about to drop some knowledge on you. Today we're going to be talking about the Scoville scale. Start Hot Science off episode one with the most basic thing there is to know about things spicy. The Scoville scale was developed by Wilbur Scoville in 1912. I'm going to finish this pepper. <laughs> Basically what Mr. Scoville did was he decided to test the concentration of capsaicin, which is the active ingredient in all things spicy. Uh, he tested the concentration per dry mass. What he did was something called the organoleptic test. And I'm not going to tell you anything more about that because it's complicated and boring. And honestly, I'm not even sure if I pronounced it right. What I am going to tell you about is the Scoville scale. We're going to use a nice little graph because all scientists make graphs. So if this is the Scoville graph, we're going to be measuring Scoville heat units here. Scoville heat units. And here we're going to measure, should you put that in your mouth? The answer is usually no. In your mouth. We're going to start off with sweet peppers, your greens, your reds, your oranges that you put in your salads. Those go right here at the origin. They measure in at zero Scoville units and the answer is meh because we don't care about them. So we've got this line. Right over here, those are your bell peppers. They measure in at about 100 to 900 and they're what you find at like your fast food joints, you put them on burgers, they're the colorful hot peppers and they cut them up in rings. And this you can feed to, I'm not even gonna write this down because I don't have space and it's gonna look silly. Uh, you can feed that to children, it'll probably be fine. They might cry, but just give them a little smack, it'll be fine. Right over here, that's your jalapeno peppers. And those measure in at about, we'll put jal J for jalapeno, they measure in at about 3.5 thousand to 10,000. You, you find them in Mexican food, nachos. They're really delicious, they're green. That's where you get to the point where most people find it spicy. Maybe not super spicy, but spicy. Most, there are people who can't deal with that. Should you put that in your mouth? Absolutely, they're fantastic. Now you might be wondering, Daniel, why is everything so close together? Shut up, I'm not done yet. Plus I can't hear you, you sound like a crazy person. Right over here, that's where you can fit your habaneros. 100K to 350K. That's what I ate just now. There are plenty of people who cannot handle a habanero pepper. At that point, should you put it in your mouth, exercise extreme caution. Uh, you wanna build up to that. Get don't, don't start with habanero peppers if you're just getting into the whole eating spicy things business. Here is where things start to get interesting. Got a nice big gap here. This is where you'll find your jut balokia, or as they say in English words that people can understand and pronounce, ghost pepper. That's the spiciest thing I've ever eaten. Now I'm gonna draw a picture over here. That is the size of the piece to scale of ghost pepper that I ate. I could not deal with that. I was tearing, I was sweating. It got really, really warm. I had to take off my sweatshirt. A friend of mine had a similar sized piece and he started salivating uncontrollably and he had to change shirts because of how much he drooled. These peppers are absolutely bonkers. For a long time, they actually held the world record for spiciest pepper in the world. They measure in at about, we'll put a G here for ghost, they measured in at about a million. One million Scoville heat units. They're not the world record holders anymore, but should you put them in your mouth? And the answer is yes, but there'll be some reluctant striptease. So don't actually, really don't. Here is the current world record holder. Uh, it's called the Carolina Reaper, and the Carolina Reaper measures in at about two million. They have been known to peak at 2.2 million Scoville heat units. Should you put that in your mouth? Absolutely fucking not. That's just, just why, why? Why would you do something like that? That's just absolutely insane. It's a crazy thing to do. So what's pure capsation? If you were to take a spoonful of it and you were to measure the Scoville heat count, it, would be, it wouldn't It would actually be on this chart. It, it measures in at 16 million. And the interesting thing about the Scoville heat scale is that it's used to measure uh, capsation concentrations. Uh, capsation's not the highest thing on that scale. Since it was invented, they've found other chemicals that I can't pronounce 
that have similar properties work the same way as capsaicin, they are 10 times worse, 100 times worse. That scale gets really, really high, really, really quickly. But as far as food is concerned, you've got the peppers. Two million is where the peppers top off. Capsation is eight times that. And if you put that in your mouth, you will die. If you put it on your skin, it will burn you. And there's no real treatments. I was researching this and I looked it up. What is the treatment if you have exposure to capsation? The treatment is remove exposure and hope. Just don't, don't touch it anymore. It was a bad idea. Will it hurt if you put it in your mouth? Thanks for watching. This has been Hot Science.